Good morning, Bright Star and St. James. Come on, good morning, Bright Star and St. James. Come on, clap your hands, all ye people. Come on, shout unto the Lord with the voice of triumph. I can't hear you. Come on, hallelujah. Come on, let's saturate this place with our voice. Come on, clap your hands. Come on, open up your mouths. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for allowing us to be in one more service, one more time. Hallelujah to our online visitors and friends. God bless you. Hallelujah. Anybody glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Well, come on, put your hands together if you're glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning. I was like, Jesus, what are you going to have me say today? I didn't have a clue. Last night, our granddaughter, who's two, was over at the house, and she sleeps so well. My back is really hurting. God bless us. But... She woke up in the middle of the night screaming, Dada, Dada, Dada. And I'm like, Daddy's not here. But she heard that soothing voice of her papa. Yeah. How many of us reach out to the Lord every day and he answers us? Yeah. The Lord soothes us and he calms us. Come on, how many of you reach out to the Lord on a daily basis and he takes care of our needs? He provides everything that we need. Come on, put your hands together for a selfless God. Today is Palm Sunday and it signifies him going back into Jerusalem, the triumphant entry of going back into Jerusalem. He was getting ready to give a selfless act and die for us. Oh, what a sacrifice our Lord has made for us. Aren't you excited about that sacrifice? he made so come on and enter into his gates with thanksgiving come on come on and enter into his courts with praise come on let's be thankful unto him come on let's bless his name for the lord is good the lord is good is he good to anybody other than me is he good to anybody other than me come on let's bless his name this morning god you're wonderful god you're amazing god you're magnificent god you're awesome God, we love you. Thank you for sacrificing your life for us. Oh, what a promise he made to us. Come on, let's bless him on this morning. God, we thank you. We honor you for this service. We thank you for being in the midst of us today, Lord. We love you, God. We bless you, God. Come on and open up your mouths and pray with me. God, you're mighty. God, you're the king of kings. God, you're the Lord of lords. We thank you, Lord. Where will we be if it had not been for your grace and your mercy we were not consumed God you gave it to us new this morning thank you Lord for bright star and St. James bless this service God in the name of Jesus bless our pastor as he delivers the word oh God word his mouth oh God season it with grace oh God allow us to be sponges today that we can absorb everything that we need for our spirit so that we can maintain this week in the name of Jesus bless us oh God keep us and let your face shine upon us in the mighty powerful and undefeated name of Jesus. Come on to clap your hands. Come on to open up your mouth. In Jesus name. Amen. Good morning Bright Star. Good morning St. James. Our morning scripture will be coming from Psalms 100 the first through the fifth verse and it reads as thus. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that had made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting. And his truth endured to all generations. The word of the Lord is blessed. Hallelujah. 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 Good morning. Good morning. Our hymn of the morning is Lift Him Up. Come on, how to reach? How to reach the masses in a very bird.
the Bright Star Church Chicago and St. James Ministry, where Superintendent Christy Harris Sr. is our pastor. Woo! At Bright Star and St. James, we are lifting the Savior through loving saints with lights that shine. Our joint worship services are currently being held at Kidwood Academy on 5015 South Blackstone Avenue, Chicago, Illinois, 60615. Our churches can be reached via telephone at 773-373-5220. We want to thank you for tuning in online, and we hope you have subscribed to our church's YouTube channel. We are asking that you share this service online and help us spread God's love today. At this time, we would like to welcome all of our guests by asking them to please stand. Any guests? Woo! Yay! <laughs> welcome and thank you for coming. Bright Star and St. James, let's join them and stand as we welcome them as well as each other. At Bright Star and St. James, you are always welcome. Everybody standing on your feet this morning, let's find somebody to love on and hug on. Praise the Lord. It's so good to see you this morning. I'm waving at you because I can't reach you, but help one another and give somebody a hug and tell them it's good to see you in God's house. It's good to see you. And online, it's good to have you here with us. Maybe one day you'll come in and sing this song with us. Jesus in me. In me. Love the Jesus in me. The Jesus in me. Jesus in me. Love the Jesus in me. This is your girl Ashley Willis reporting for Bright Star and St. James. We warmly welcome all visitors. We want to acknowledge you and thank you for coming. And to our online viewers, thank you for tuning into our service. We ask that you please share our service on social media. Our goal is to reach 400 shares and we're depending on you. For more information about our church, you may visit us at stjamesministrychicago.com or Bright Star Church Chicago. Com. During these times, we need prayer now more than ever. Join us for our Zoom prayer call every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday morning. Prayer begins at 6 a.m. and you can join us by dialing in or by using the Zoom link. Let's come together to pray for each other. Save the date, Friday, March 29th at 7 p.m we will be having our Easter production. Please invite your family and friends to our Good Friday service, then sit back, relax, and enjoy our Easter production. You don't want to miss it. For additional information, please see our Minister of Worship, Cicely Anderson. Friends, I am living proof that dreams do come true. Let me take you back 10 years ago to March 2014. Check this out. In traveling to Israel, 
I knew I would gain a greater understanding of the Jewish state and its people. But I never, ever expected to find an idea that would help the people in my community. We saw trained therapists working with children and families, redirecting the pain and trauma at its source. Now that's how the speech started, but let me show you how the speech ended. Oh, oh they ready back there. Now you gotta clap your hands real good. Put your hands together. Walk with me. Walk with me. Walk with me. Clap your hands. Walk with me. Come on and walk with me. Walk with me. Jews and blacks. Walk with me. White men, black people. Walk with me. Come on and walk with me. Walk with me. I said walk with me. I got to admit, it was an exciting day. For the first time, the new leadership of Bright Star Community Outreach met with the new leadership of the American Friends of Natal, came together in the Turn Center, walked them through our Behavior Health Department, where our trauma helpline, based on the Natal model in Israel, was able to now touch 50,000 people. Unbelievable. In addition to that, walked them through our Health and Wellness Department, our Workforce Development Department, where we provide jobs for more than 4,000 people already. It was an exciting day, planning and thinking about what the next phase is. We are going to replicate this turn model. We're going to scale it up and take it to other communities and cities. I am extremely excited. Let me just tell you something. Vision is foresight with insight based on hindsight. And our friends have come to the table Northwestern, University of Chicago, the United Way, St. Bernard, and so many others to partner together to address violence and trauma in Chicago. And guess what? We got results. 17% reduction in shooting, 14% reduction in assault, 10% reduction in robberies. I got to tell you, the work is working. Go to our website, brightstarcommunityoutreach.com. Learn more. Come on, peruse through the whole website. Learn more about our work. And we don't just want you to get informed. We really need you to get involved. And guess what? We are getting ready to bring this work to a city and a community near you. If you're interested, look at the information on the screen, follow up with us. And guess what? Natal and Bright Star Community Outreach, along with our other partners, are getting ready to take this show on the road. Dreams come true, visions come to pass, and partners collaborate with one specific focus, strengthening hope and saving lives. We request there is no talking, walking, eating, or chewing gum in the sanctuary while the word is going forth. If you are asked to relinquish your seat for our disabled or elderly, we ask that you please cooperate. If you are tuning in online, we ask that you please share our service. When you are prompted to give, we ask that you go to our church website and click on the giving tab. Pay by Zelle, Cash App, or use our text to give option. We appreciate your cooperation. You have heard your church announcements, so please govern yourselves accordingly. Again, this is your girl, Ashley Willis, reporting for Bright Star and St. James.
is the way, the truth, and the life. No man come unto the Father except through him. Hallelujah. The Bible says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. If there's anyone that has a need in the house, come to the Father this morning. Come to the feet of Christ. Hallelujah. He's ready to give you rest. Amen. Hallelujah. And so our Father, King of kings and Lord of lords, immortal, invincible, the only wise God, we come before you because you are the source of life. We come before you because we know you are the one that can do all things. The Bible says there is nothing impossible with you. Father, we thank you because you are a good God. You are a God that never forgets his own. You are the one that, that has written our names on the palm of your hands. You are the one that watches over us while we sleep. The Bible says you neither sleep nor slumber. Hallelujah. Father, we bless you. We honor you and we adore you. Thank you for the gift of life. We do not take it for granted. It is a privilege, O oh God. Thank you, O oh God, for food on our table, for roof over our heads and clothes on our back. Thank you for morning. Thank you for afternoon. Thank you for evening. Thank you because we can feel the, the, the weather. Thank you, O oh God, because we are, not, we, we are not in the hospital, O oh God. Thank you because we can walk with our legs, O oh God. Thank you because we can taste with our tongues. Thank you because, O oh God, the, everything you do, O oh God, is perfect. Thank you because we can see with our eyes. Thank you for our nose. Thank you, O oh God, for we can talk, O oh God. We have mouths and we can talk and we can eat. Thank you, O oh God, for all these little messes, O oh God. We do not take any of it for granted. We give you the glory, we give you the honor, we give you the adoration, O oh God. And so, our Father, we have come before you this morning, O oh God. We've come to lay our bodies at your feet, O oh God. Because we know only you can lift bodies. You are the lifter of all bodies. Sir. Lord, as many as, as our bodies are, Lord, we know that you can do all things. The Bible says you will meet us at the point of our needs. And so with that confidence we have come, oh God, that you will meet us at the point of our needs in the name of Jesus. Father, oh God, for every heart today, you are the one that sees their hearts, oh God. If there is anything, oh God, they, are, they have come to you for, Lord. Lord, oh God, answer their prayers. And even the ones they cannot, they cannot say out, Lord, answer them, Lord. In the name of Jesus, do that which only you can do. Make a way in the wilderness. Make a way where there seems to be no way, oh God. Enlarge us and bless us mightily. In the name of Jesus. Father, we ask for your anointing. Your anointing that breaks the yoke. The anointing that takes one beyond oneself. Father, bestow upon us in the name of Jesus. Father, oh God, we ask for everyone that is in the hospital right now. We ask, oh God, that you visit them, Lord. Touch them, oh God. You are the great physician, oh God. By the stripes of Christ, we decree and we declare that they are healed in the name of Jesus. Father, oh God, as we go into the Holy Week, oh God, as we wait upon you, we ask that you will renew our strength, oh God. We will mount up with wings as eagles. We will run and we will not grow weary. We will walk and we will not faint, oh God. Lord, all the things, oh God, that you want us to see, you will open our eyes to see them in the name of Jesus. Father, oh God, at the end of it all, oh God, we will be renewed, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Our minds will be renewed. Our minds will be focused on you. You will let our minds stay on you in the name of Jesus. Father, we will experience you like we have not experienced you before in the name of Jesus. We pray for our pastor, oh God. We ask that as he goes, you will be in a pillar of cloud, oh God, by day for him. You will be in a pillar of fire by night for him in the name of Jesus. Surround him, oh God, with your angels, oh God. And give your angels charge over him to keep him in all his ways in the name of Jesus. As he brings forth his your word, oh God. Lord, we ask that is your word will fall on our ears at fighter ground in the mighty name of Jesus. And your word will bring forth fruits that are well pleasing unto you to the glory of your name. Father, we thank you. 
because your word says exceeding and beyond our expectation exceeding and beyond what we have asked you would do father we thank you we we'll honor you we give you the glory we give you the honor be now be exalted lord forever and we clap and with a clap offering and we shout in our mouth we say thank you father for all that you do for all that you are doing and all over that you have done we give you bread glory we give you honor blessed be your name and in jesus name we are free thank god amen, amen. Oh, we do. 
on your feet, everybody. Come on, clap your hands up in here. Everybody, while you're on your feet, just clap your hands. Would you just tell three people, it won't last always. Come on, tell three people, struggle, it's not going to last always. Pain, it ain't going to last always. Sickness, it won't last always. Anybody know it's over? Anybody know it's over? Y'all say, does anybody know it's over? Don't prophesy, does anybody know it's over? Say it again, come on. Anybody know it's over? Put your hand on it. Anybody know it's over? Tell your neighbor. over that means something else is about to begin shout for a brand new start up in here come on oh, oh. Everybody, sit down. I got a plane to catch. 
God is good. He continues to bless us over and over and over again. If you're glad to be alive, shout up in here. Now, I know some dead folks that would have got louder than y'all. Let me say it again. If you're glad to be alive, shout in here. I don't know about y'all, but I'm glad to be in the land of the dying on my way to the land of the living. Now, if y'all didn't come to have church, you could have tuned in. But those that are glad that you are in church today, make some noise up in here. And if you're glad about who you sat next to, shout for them right now. All right, let me try it another way. If they good looking, make some noise for them. Woo! I'm getting ready to ask every visitor to stand. And it's not that we want to put you on blast. We just want to appreciate you for coming to hang with us. You had a myriad of choices and options and you decided on Palm Sunday, I'm going to hang out with Bright Star and St. James. And I need you to know you did not make a bad choice. You made a fantastic choice. Because I don't know if I can get three shouters right here, but these are the best churches in the world. Bright Star and St. James. And I know some of our folks, we moved our service 30 minutes earlier, so they running about 25 minutes late. So they on their way, but either way, I'm glad y'all made it and got here on time. But more than that, when visitors come to your church, because they don't have to come to your church, they could go anywhere else, but they came to hang with us. We want to appreciate them. So visitors, I'm going to ask you to stand. But when I ask you to stand, I just want to warn you, people are going to go crazy around you because they're grateful that you chose Bright Star and St. James. On the count of three, visitors stand and get your love that you deserve. One, two, three, your turn. Come on, put the camera on all of these. Come on, come on, come on. I need y'all to do better than that. Come on. Who's glad they sat in your section? Now, wait a minute. The reality is, it is important. <laughs> All right, Jermaine. <laughs> I looked at my sound, man. I was like, who is that back there? He got a new haircut. I see what's going on. <laughs> you look good, son. I see. <laughs> Got your jacket on and everything. <laughs> where my daughter, Sister Gil, where you at? Hey, he's taken in Jesus' name. All right. Oh, my God. Visitors, thank y'all for coming, and I hope y'all will come again and again and again. Clap for them one more time. Thank y'all for coming to hang out with us. You can be seated. Listen, I flew in so I can flew out, and... uh. I just got, <laughs> got back from Dallas and I got to get on the plane in a few minutes to go to Israel. I just want to calm y'all nerves. Um, listen, I am going to Israel. Yes, they are in the midst of a war, but so is your neighborhood. So are the gangs in your neighborhood. And I am grateful for your concern and I would that you would pray for me. Uh, I am not going alone. First of all, I'm glad my son is going with me. I'm taking Christian to Israel for the first time. And I'm going to see if I say this and get y'all to go crazy. We just going to spout the land so y'all can go. Anybody want to go to the Holy Land? I'm going. I'm going to the Holy Land now. Let me be very clear. We are not going alone. As other people going, we're going with a group. So if you'll pray for me, God will cover me. And I'm not going by myself. Christian ain't going by himself. We're taking two additional guests. Goodness and mercy is going to follow us all the days of our life. And I'm super excited about what the Lord has done. Get your Bibles and hold them up real quick. I'm just trying to get to my Facebook crowd over here. Just tell y'all, thank you for tuning in. Joseph uh, Neelan, thank you for tuning in. LaShawn, thank you uh, for tuning in. Sabrina, what's up? Thank you for tuning in. Puda, Puda, Puda Capone, I like that. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, Goldie Jackson, that's a keep, keep tuning in. 
Listen, this is what it's ta I'm talking about. Those of y'all that are watching us on YouTube, we want to tell you thank you for coming. Here's the way that you can enlarge our tent and expand our audience. You can go to our Bright Star Church Chicago Facebook page. You can go to our St. James Church Chicago Facebook page, and you can share the service right now. Look on your right and your left, and ask your neighbor, did you share the service yet? Wait on an answer. The one that won't look at you is the one that don't want people in the club last night to know they got up and came to church this morning with Ciroc on their breath. <laughs> I be playing too much, don't I? These ain't jokes. Uh, no. <laughs> I'm just trying to tell you I'm excited. And I want you all to please go share the service right now. So, so, so those who, who are in your sphere of influence will be able to partake of uh, this wonderful, wonderful service. Hold your Bibles up right now. Hold your Bibles up and pray for my voice. I'm a bit hoarse. Uh, and hold your Bibles up and just say these words. Say, this is my Bible. Say, I am what it declares I am. Say, I can do every single thing this word declares. I can do as we rush to Luke chapter 19 verse 20 through 40 28 through 40 Luke 19 say I can have look at your neighbor and say you shall have look back and say we shall have every single thing this word declares we shall have in Jesus name somebody shout amen Luke chapter 19 Luke chapter 19, verse 28, 28 through 40. I would that you would stand for the reading of the word of God. We are going to stand for two reasons. Number one, uh, the first reason I ask people to stand during the reading of the word of God is out of respect and reverence for the word of God. Out of respect and reverence for the word of God. The second reason I typically ask people to stand is I realize that's the only response I'm going to get out of some of y'all, so I'm going to get it now early in the sermon and so as we look at Luke chapter 19 verses 28 through 40 we're going to read them all responsibly uh, that means I will read all of the even numbers you'll read the odd numbers and then we'll take it from a solo to a symphony in verse 40 and here is what's important that you understand that we're sharing here today uh, that this word is going to bless somebody's life anybody believe that Here's what the scripture says in Luke 19, verse 28. And when he had thus spoken, is that in your Bible? Should be on the screen as well. He went before, ascending up, 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 ascending up to Jerusalem. Everybody, you read. Now this piece is important. Don't miss verse 30. Saying, go ye into the village over against you. In the which at your entering ye shall find a colt, a donkey tied. Whereon yet never man sat. Here is shouting material. Lose him. And bring him hither to me. You read. Come on. I need you to look. Ooh, good God of money. I, this ain't even my subject. But I want you to look at that neighbor and say, neighbor, God's going to set you free. Because he's about to use you. Give God a shout of praise right there. He's going to, because the Lord had need of him. Verse 32 says, and they that were sent went their way and found even as he had said unto them, read. <laughs> Isn't that something? They want to know, why did you let it go? Why did you release that? Mm. And as they were loosing the coat, the owners thereof said unto them, why loose ye the coat? I love that part. And they said, the Lord hath need of him. Ooh, I like reading that twice. Come on, you read. And as they went, as he went, as he went, they spread their clothes in the way. Read like you mean it. <laughs> the 
They began to raise their voice. I'm going to stop right there. This is my subject. Grab your neighbor by the hand. And hold that neighbor by the hand. And say, neighbor, I give you no options because you sat next to me. Say, neighbor, if you've seen something, say something. Those that have seen the Lord work, I need you to shout like you done lost your mind. Slap three high fives, tell them I've seen them work. I've seen them work. Give me that organ back and I'm ready. Sit down. If you've seen something. Say something. I'm not trying to push you, but when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my soul cries out. I, I got to rush, but just elbow the person who sound and look thankful next to you and just tell them I've seen him work. I've seen him work. Lord, and I want to tell you, whatever you saw in the past is only a snapshot of what he's getting ready. Praise him in advance for what you know he's going to do. If you've seen something, say something. When I look back over my life and I think things over, I can truly say that I've been blessed. I have a testimony. I want to, I want to real quick just... hand tell your neighbor the neighbor whatever you saw cannot compare to what you're about to see I tell you start shouting for those that know greater is coming shout like you trust it now There were cries in the crowd on Palm Sunday. I want to speak to every believer. And I want to tell you why today is so important. I could have flew from Dallas hanging out with Bishop Jakes in this conference. And, and yes, I went. Because I like to show up when you're in trouble. I like to show up when people dogging you and talking about you. I like I like to be there when other Negroes leave there. I like to just. I could have flew from Dallas and went straight on to Israel, but I had to stop by Kenwood. Because I had a feeling I'm going to find my crowd next. I had a feeling I was going to run past some thankful people.
who understand that we as Christians have a responsibility to hold fast to the profession of our faith. We, we as Christians have a responsibility to make sure that those who are not as spiritually mature as we are, we got to make sure that we put some strength in their weakness. We got to make sure that those of us who grew up in church but messed around and grew out of church keep our priorities in the right perspective to say that the main thing is to keep the main thing the main thing. And I just got a question for you. Do you know what the main thing is? And the main thing is still Jesus. You see, I lost the whole section. The main, the main thing is not you getting money in your bank. The main thing lost this section is not you rolling on dubs and laid back with your mind on your money and your money on, lost that section the main thing is you not wearing red bottoms and uh, lubricants or lubricants or whatever fashion you got the main thing is not you having a man or having a woman the main thing is not you being booed up and bayed up no the main thing is not you being able to expand your career. The main, the main thing is not you being able to choose the best restaurant in the city so that you and your homie at the church can go and go have a meal and a mimosa. No, no. The main thing is making sure that we remember he made a promise. If I be lifted up from the earth, here's what he said. I'll draw all men unto, you missed it he said if I be lifted up if I if I be lifted up I'll draw all men uh, in, in other words when Jesus draws someone that means he pulls them out of into you missed your shout he pulls them out of into so here it is if you got any family member, y'all ain't talking, that is in a bad situation, God told me to tell you right now, if you lift me up, I'll draw them out. Talk to me. Some of y'all are literally one radical praise from your daughter getting delivered, from your son being set free. You, you are one radical praise from your, from, from your mama getting out the hospital, from your Daddy getting his memory back. You are, you, I, I, here's what I want you to do. Open your mouth for every sale, every jail sale that your family is incarcerated in. Shout right now for them coming out. Tell your neighbor if you shout, they'll come out. If you shout. Let me see what they will do without y'all music. Let me see. He's going to draw them out and take them into. And I just want to tell you, whatever you're coming out of today, whatever God's getting ready to take you into is way better than where you came. I just want to tell three of y'all that a shout like you really trust God. It's about to get good and good. It's about to get good and good. I said what I said, but you intellectual folks. It's about to get gooder and gooder. Isn't it? And the interesting thing about it is when you look at what our responsibility as a Christian is, is to lay concrete on the foundation that the matriarchs and patriarchs laid for us. You ain't here because you came in. You here because he invited you in. You're not here because you chose to be here. 
No, no. You are here because you were chosen to be here. And you owe it to God to make sure that the generations to come will never not know what Palm Sunday is all about. It is our job, our responsibility, it is our assignment to make sure that those who are coming behind us will never not know what Holy Week is all about. It is our task to make sure that those who are coming behind us will never misunderstand what we call Good Friday. That I know Jesus would call Bad Friday is all about. It is incumbent upon us to take on the responsibility to make sure that those who are coming behind us will never not know what Resurrection Sunday is. Listen, did no bunny die for you? You ain't saved because of a rabbit. How the devil do you get an Easter egg mixed up with an empty grave? I, I would suggest that if we just want to get the point across to children of this day, uh, let me preach y'all pay attention. Don't let nobody talk to you and distract you because they don't even know this. Tell somebody, pay attention, stop talking. Let me tell you, you want to get the point across to these kids? If they want an Easter egg, put it in a coffin. So that as they pick their candy out of a coffin, they understand that the only reason that they're getting life is out of death. Somebody died for you to live. I'm going to start a sentence and I hope you jokers know how to finish it. And his name is Jesus. Jesus. Boy, you know what? If, if Jesus was here today and he is because he's in you. But boy, boy, if, he, if, he, if he was preaching today and had the mic, well, he, he is because he's in me and getting the word through me. But Jesus will teach you, those that are here on the scene and those of you all that are watching on the screen, he will teach you how to deal with a bipolar society. Because you know what he would do? He would teach you, here it is, that the same people who celebrated me on Palm Sunday are the same people who assassinated me on Good Friday. I'm going to say this for those of y'all that are way in the back because I know y'all got my back today. But all it takes is a few days for a Negro to change on you. Because some of the people had nothing to do what, what the Sanhedrin council was saying against Jesus. But because they gave their ear to those who were influential, that's when they begin to say, hey, the same guy that we say, there go the Messiah, five days later, they said crucify him. And you better be careful who you give your ear to. Because when you allow people to be influential in your life, and have power over your ear, y'all ain't talking to me, they will make you hate people that you used to love. But I came to tell every joke in here that don't like people, come on and talk to me about them. I'm going to snatch your hand and take you right to them and say, let me tell you what he just said about you. Let me tell you what she did. Y'all ain't going to say nothing because it's the gossip section. You better learn how to stop letting people change your mind about people and you holding third 
party grudges against somebody that ain't did nothing to you. Tell these folk that ain't my trash, take it back to your dirty house. You ain't gonna stink up my spirit. Tell your neighbor, don't let them change you. I'm glad I'm getting on the plane after this. Three people that gossip in this church just got mad. See, you got to understand that in the text, in the text we see a bipolar crowd. And I wonder how many bipolar children do God have? Who lie and say, I'll bless the Lord at all times. But when rough times show up, they forget about all times in rough times. I'll bless the Lord at all times. And his praises shall continually be in my mouth. Listen, if his praises shall continually be in your mouth, you ought to still be able to praise him when you get a check. And when you get a disconnection notice. Y'all didn't got quiet. Oh, I thank God for this middle section. Y'all. See, I flew in for y'all. You better be able, if his praises shall continually be in your mouth, you ought to be able to praise him when you are employed and when you are underemployed. You, If his praises shall continually be in your mouth, you ought to be able to praise him when you feel good and when you feel bad. I bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make a boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof. And the humble shall hear that. Wait a minute. Wait, here it is. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make a boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof. What? And be... I want to just tell you something. What you're about to do right now is literally getting ready to pull somebody out of depression or keep them out of depression. If the humble shall hear thereof and be glad, that means your testimony will literally shift the paradigm of their thinking. And what you say out of your mouth about your God is going to help build faith in their life. Look at your neighbor right now, and I want you to tell them one thing God did for you this week that you couldn't do for yourself, and I decree and declare your testimony is going to free them from any unhappiness. Do it right now. I dare you tell them. Watch them start smiling. Watch their hands start going up. Watch their spirit start shifting. Because when the humble hear their up, they start getting glad about it. And I just want you to grab your neighbor by the hand and shake the hand like you're going to shake it off. Put some weight on it and tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, me too. That's it. He fed you, me too. He healed you, me too. He woke you up, me too. He turned your life around, me too. And if you've seen something, you ought to say So when you look at the text, when you look at the text, the Bible says, verse, verse 28, verse 28, and when he had thus spoken, he went before ascending up to Jerusalem. Here it is. And it came to pass, verse 29, when he was come nigh to Bethphage and Bethany at the mount called the Mount of Olives. The mount of Olives. He sent his disciples, two of his disciples at the Mount of Olives. Mount of Olives. I've been to the Mount of Olives seven times. Uh, a couple days I'll be there for the eighth time and I'm excited about it. I'm going to the Mount of Olives. And the Mount of Olives is so amazing to me because at the Mount of Olives, uh, Bishop, at the Mount of Olives, the olive tree is in, in, in the Mount of Olives. It's, um, it's called the Mountain of Olives because there are trees there that grow olives. 
Mount Olive. <laughs> so here's what's interesting. On the Mount of Olives, on the Mount of Olives, there are trees there that make olives. And, and they, would, they would go there, and because Israel is a place that is agriculturally rich, in this mountain of olives, the farmers would go there and they would pick olives. Some people, I know you put it in your drink. But some people use it for the express purpose of their meal. <laughs> I heard somebody just say, thank God for olives. I heard you. I heard you. It's a little drink, but they put a lot of olive in it. I mean, I don't know. I just heard somebody say it. I'm just. And the interesting thing, they would, they would pick the olive. And do you not know that the olive could produce nothing until it was picked, dropped, then crushed? And some of you think you are all that. But you don't ever become everything that has been put in you until you've been snatched, picked, dropped, and then crushed. And the only people that I'm looking for in here are the folks that know you've been chosen. You got picked, you got dropped. And you got crushed. And why was the crushing of the olive important? It's because that's the only way you get the oil out of it. And you don't get anointed. Until after you got picked. After you got dropped and after you got crushed then comes the oil oh I want you to just tell your neighbor don't touch him just tell him I paid for this anointing huh? oh that's a shout by, by itself I, 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 got, I got plucked but I survived it I got dropped but I survived it I got crushed but I survived it and as a result of the picking, the dropping, and the crushing, now I'm anointed to lay my hands on you. Grab, 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 grab your neighbor. Grab your neighbor by the hand and tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, I got anointed so I can tell you greater is coming. I dare you see if they're shut up. I'm anointed to pull you out. I'm anointed to turn things around. You are anointed to start a business. Y'all ain't got quiet. You are anointed to deliver your neighbor. Slap somebody a half out. Tell them I paid for this crushing. I paid for this oil. I paid for this anointing. And that's why the oil keeps flowing. And it's they, they never, they would never, they would never crush the olive on the mountain. They picked it in a high place and took it to a low place. And crushing does not take place when you're in high places. Seem like at the lowest point of your life, is when all hell start breaking loose. And, come on, I could survive on the mountain, but, but crushing takes place in the valley. And is there anybody like me when one thing break out, seem like something else break out and something else break out and then something else break out, but don't you dare give up because I got scripture for you. I know how they act. I don't know how y'all going to act. The scripture says many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them out of them I want to just tell you you're going to survive every crushing every bruising 
if the olive was here, the olive would tell you, you don't get oil until you handle some weight. Come on now, they they could have, they they could have, they they could have, they could have actually, they could have actually got oil by squeezing the olive in the hand. But that wouldn't be enough weight, because because in order for them to get all of the oil. The oil had to withstand all of the weight. And you cannot be greatly anointed if you are lightly annoyed. You can't carry a heavy anointing and you ain't survived no heavy weight. Do you not know the folks that are praising God like they didn't lost their mind are praising God because they didn't lose their mind? <laughs> there is about 25 of y'all to say the reason I'm praising God like this. Why don't you go on and explain your radicalism to your neighbors and neighbor. Tell them, oh, neighbor. Tell them the reason I praise God is because he kept me through it all. It's because he didn't let me throw in the towel. And I'm pushing to a greater anointing. Those that survived heavy weight shout like you done lost your mind. weight produces heavy anointing and whenever you see the word oil it's connected to the anointing and whenever you think about the anointing and the oil it is as a result of the trauma that the olive experienced after being brought from a high place dropped in a low place and stepped on Have you ever been stepped on? You can be good to your family and they'll still walk all over you. Stepped on. You can be good to your friends and they'll walk all over you. And some of them Negroes you help will walk past you. Stepped on. You, you can pray for folks who will never ever pray for you. You can hope for folks who will never be hopeful for you. And then you get stepped on. And wait one minute. When you get stepped on, when you get crushed, that's when the oil comes. Will y'all sit down? I got to go. He sent two disciples and he said, verse 30, we got to go. Sit down quick. Got to go. Verse 30, he said to them, go into the village over against you. In which at your entering in, <laughs> ye shall find what I need, but it ain't delivered yet. <laughs> I, you know what I love about the Lord? He loves using undelivered vessels. Wait, wait. He knew it was an ass when he chose it. That was a mirror moment. Because when he chose you, he knew what he was getting. I didn't cuss this time it's a coat 
It's a young donkey. It's an ass. A stubborn one. And some of us have been married to. Some of us have grew up with. Some of us have been a married. Some of us are sitting next to a stubborn vessel <laughs> that Jesus still wants. And I don't care how stubborn you are. If he got to use cancer to pull you to him, he'll use it. If he got to use the gunshot to pull you to him, he'll use it. But I just need you to know, just need you to know, he going to get your stubborn. At some point, he's going to untie the donkey. Wait, wait, wait. Here's what's interesting about the donkey. In my last 20 minutes, and I got to be up. Uh, he not only loves using that which is undelivered because it's tied up. If the donkey is tied up, it's useful, but it is used less because it's still tied. To something that prohibits it from being used by Jesus. And can I get an ex donkey that was tied up to remember when you wanted to be used by Jesus, but you were still tied to the man, you were still tied to the woman, you were still tied to your ways, you were still tied to your old mindset. And today is the day where God, y'all ain't gonna shout, He's cutting cords and breaking chains. Because you will no longer be tied to your past. You will no longer be tied to your habits. Grab your neighbor and tell him, come on out of there. Come on. God sent me next to you to untie you. To break every chain. It was. It was. It was an undelivered. It was an undelivered donkey. Because he was still tied to what was holding him. Woo, and I just came to tell you. Get ready to get loose. That's why the song said, I am free. Praise the Lord. I'm free. Come here, donkey. No longer bound. No more chains holding me. My soul is resting. Yeah. It's just a blessing. Those of you all that God brought out of some stuff you was tied to. Soul ties, mind ties. Financial time. Praise the Lord. I was tied to my own way of thinking. Praise the Lord. I was tied to some old circles that I should have never got in. Raise your hand. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm free. And whom the Son sets free is free indeed. And I just came to tell you in my last 16 minutes, this is the season God's going to use undelivered people, undelivered vessels. He, he still know you snorting cane, can, cocaine a little bit. He still know you smoke weed a little bit, a lot bit. <laughs> He still know you drank. You drank, you drank. He still know that you ain't married, but you like sex. He, 
he, he's, he knows, he knows that you struggle with your sexuality and youthful promiscuity matured into adult promiscuity. So, so it's not that you got better, you just are better at sinning. Because you learn how to hide it. Come on, y'all, we got to be honest with the Lord. Eh? Some of us, we're not delivered, we just discreet. I'm preaching the stink out this thing. We stop trying to make other people think that you better than them just because you know how to hide your stuff. You, you did yours in private and they did theirs in public. Everybody got an R. Kelly tape that could have got released. You was just smart enough to not let yours be recorded. I came to talk real to some undelivered donkeys that are still stubborn in our ways. And God said, I still love you with an everlasting love. I still, they trying to pull me up out of here to the airport. I'm trying to tell you that he still wants you undelivered. Only difference between Jesus and the homosexual is they both after men, just one wanted for the wrong reason. Well, there's my airplane. <laughs> to use, sit down, he likes to use undelivered vessels can, 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 I, can, I, can I get ready to close hey, shh, sit down sit down, I got, come on I got 12 minutes, here it is, here it is shh. how's traffic <laughs> uh, um, he loves to use, it's bad okay, okay, here it is, here it is shh, shh, stay with me uh, he loves to use undelivered vessels Write this down. This is, this is going to get the rest of the crowd I ain't got yet. Come on, Nana Janice, sit down. I'm preaching good when she's staying. It's, he loves to use, write it down, not only undelivered vessels, he loves to use unused vessels. Because the text says, good God Almighty. In verse 30, he said, hey, disciples, go into the village over against you and when you enter in you're going to find a stubborn colt a stubborn donkey tied here it is get the baby uh, wherein yet never man sat I want something that ain't nobody used yet what kind of God is this that would tell you I not only want to use the ones that are undelivered, they still tied to stuff and can't move. I want to use the ones that are unused. And do you not know in society, companies, I won't, companies, companies won't hire you, come here, unless you have experience. That's why they ask you for your resume. Because wait, here it is. If they're going to give you a job, they want to know that you have experience or past point of reference to be able to get the task done. And you know what's cold about Jesus choosing you is he wants you to be inexperienced because some of us have learned too much old stuff to be assigned new jobs. God said, I want to use the ones that have no experience, no knowledge, no capacity, no education, 
and they can't, they can't blame their success on the degrees that they have. God, God said, I want, wait, here it is. I want to choose and use the one that nobody else would use or choose. I just want to tell y'all this. Your experience don't matter to Jesus. Because he would choose someone less experienced and less educated than you. And will teach you what you could never learn in the school that you sat in. Would you just tell your neighbor, be careful how you treat me. He's about to use me. Come on now. I ain't. I ain't never preached like Harris, but I got a word. I ain't never taught like Dr. Sims, but I got a word. I ain't never been on the pulpit or the platform, but I got a word. I got, I got a witness. He said, we have this treasure in earthen vessels. I just want to tell you, you got a word in you. And for the next six days, God's going to use you to evangelize your company, your co-workers, your block, and your family. And because of the word that's on the inside of you, somebody's going to get delivered. You better get this, Rachel. You're going to miss it. Better get this, Ivan. You're going to miss it. Better get this, better get this Mother Estes. You're going to miss it. God has a way of choosing and using the undelivered. He has a way of choosing and using <laughs> the unused. I just, I just want to remind you, you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. And God tends to choose strange people and give them strange assignments. Just raise your hand and say, he's about to use me. He, he's, about to, he's about to use me. Here it is. Here it is. We got to go. We got to go. Here it is. I'm at, I'm at, I'm at, I'm at eight minutes. Okay, now, okay, here it is. They said, you got to go, Harris. Uh, here it is, here it is. He said, choose the one, got to go, that nobody has sat on. And wait, here's what's, here's, what's, here's what's amazing. When you look at verse 31, put it on the screen. And if any man ask you, why did you release him? I swear I'm finna go after this. If anybody, wait, here's what's interesting. The text says, if any man asks you, why do you lose him? Come here, Janelle, can I give this to him? Notice the text says, if any man. He didn't even say if the owner. He didn't even say if the possessor of the donkey come and ask you why I, he didn't say if the owner, he say if any man. Because when God is getting ready to deliver you and use you, folks will start asking questions that ain't got nothing to do with your deliverance. You better stop paying attention to folks who got questions about your deliverance. This is the season of unexplained exits. I just came to tell you, learn how to tell people to stop minding the Lord's business. Whatever he's doing with me is between me and him and I ain't got to explain nothing to nobody that ain't my maker. You better grab your neighbor by the hand. Shake him and rock him. Rock him and shake him. And tell
tell that neighbor, say, neighbor, if you didn't make me, I don't owe you an explanation. That's between me and Jesus. My smoking habit between me and Jesus. My sexual proclivities between me and Jesus. Slap you folk a high five, tell them that's between me and the Lord. That's between. If you give them an answer, it's one answer. The Lord hath need of me. I got to go. But he said, if, if any. <laughs> Verse 31. If any man shall ask, why do you lose him? Thus shall you say unto him, because the Lord have need of him. Verse 32, out of here. Uh, and they that were sent went their way, and they found, just like Jesus said, verse 33, and as they were loosing the coat, here come the owner. The, shh, come here. Come here. Last, last five minutes, Robin, we out of here. We out here. Last five minutes. Promise. Come here. Shh. Don't miss this. It's right there in the text. You didn't see it, but I saw it, so I'm going to give it to you. Here it is. Um, watch this. And verse 33. And as they were loosing the colt, let me tell you what blew me away, and I ain't got time to deal with it, but I'm going to give you a little bit. See you next week. The owners thereof said unto them, Why? Loose ye the cult. Wait, come here. The owners. As we get ready to go, you would think the donkey, one donkey, would have one owner. Will you pay attention and act like you studied this to deliver? You would think that one donkey would have one owner. But the text says the owners, plural. You got to be honest today and tell the truth. It's more than one thing holding you from Jesus. If you think it's just one thing holding you, then you are an inexperienced, unlearned Christian. The devil ain't going to never give one demon to you to hold you back. The devil ain't going to never give you one demon to keep you away from Jesus. Owners. We, you, know, you know what we have? We got way too many things holding us. The text says the owners, and, and here it is, the owners had a conversation with some disciples. The owners had some conversations with, with some disciples. Hold on. Plural owners. Plural disciples. You know why some Vessels shh, that Jesus want to use ain't delivered yet. It's because disciples today don't want a partner. And the scripture says one can chase a thousand. I am a preacher. Two can put 10,000 to flight. And how dare you sit there in a service where the devil is trying to hold your neighbor back. And when I tell your mean self to touch your neighbor, you don't want to touch nobody. When I tell you look at your neighbor, you say, I'm sick of looking at my neighbor. But if the Bible says, 
where two or three would gather themselves together touching and agreeing he said I'll be in the midst and I'm sorry that I can't finish the rest of this but I dare you to grab your neighbor by the hand and tell your neighbor said neighbor there are some devils and there are some demons that are designed to keep you tied up but God sent me to stand next to you to pull you from where you've been stuck and if one can chase a thousand two can put ten thousand to fight I need you to collaborate with me I need you to partner with me because when I call my child's name I want you to shout what I call it when I call my mama name I want you to shout when I call it when I call out my neighbor's name I want you to shout when I call it. Grab them one more time. Rock them and shake them. Shake them and rock them. Up. And tell them demons team up. Now disciples are going to team up. And we're going to pull our family out. We're going to pull our children out. We're going to pull our daughters out. We're going to pull our sons out. Matter of fact, I'll sit next to you so I can pull you out. Grab somebody said I'm pulling you out. The Lord got me up you. I'm pulling you out. Jesus want to ride on you. I'm pulling you out so the Lord can ride. And is there anybody here ever seen God pull you out? Where are the folks that saw God pull you out? Where are the people that saw God pull your mama out? Is there anybody here that can remember he brought you out? Grab your neighbor. I said if he did it before, y'all ain't touching nobody. I said if he did it before, he can do it again. And I snatch him and said, come on out. Come on. Come on, grab that neighbor, pull that hand and tell him we got no other choice. We got to come on out. Come on, look at somebody. Tell them I won't leave you behind. Look at somebody and tell them I won't leave you where you are. Tell them I won't leave you in the space that you're in. Tell them I command you to come out of that place. Come on, look at them, tell them. Come out of depression. Come out of sickness. Come out of that irritation because the Lord needs you today. I dare you to look at your neighbor. You may have thought you were useless, but look at him and tell him the Lord needs you. They told you you wasn't worth anything. They said you'd never amount to nothing. But look at somebody and tell them that the Lord, I said, I yeah, both eyes. Look at somebody and tell them that the Lord need me. So I got to step out. I can't. I can't. I got to step. I got to move when the Lord calls my name. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. All right. For those of us who thought we were left behind world began to beat us down and made us feel like we were worth nothing couldn't do nothing made it feel like we made so many mistakes that God had forgot about us made it feel like we were so deep in sin that the Lord turned his back on us I want to talk to about 35 I'll make 36 of y'all they can stand up and say thank God that he still needed me come on thank God that he still chose me Thank God that he still want to use me. Thank God that he still got to work for me. I thank God. As bad as I was, as messed up as he got, he still had work for me to do. We praise the Lord today. You just don't know, sometimes you can get so down, Elder Dickerson, 
You could get so low, Elder Perry. You could get so far away from God and your thoughts, Evangelist Barnes, to where the devil will actually make you think that God don't want nothing to do with you. Oh, I ain't got nobody want to be real in here today. You can mess up so bad and swear that the last time was your last time. I ain't got no real help. Until you find yourself in the same position you was in the last time. And the devil will creep up behind you and whisper in your ear, I told you you wasn't nothing. The devil will use a family member or a friend to remind you of who you was before God brought you out. And today we lay our hell on the head of that serpent. I want everybody for the next 30 seconds that we open the doors of the church, raise your hands in the air as an act of surrender. Everybody that got two hands, raise them up. And for the next few seconds, I want you to open your mouth up and magnify the Lord that he saw past all the stuff. <sighs> open your mouth up and magnify him because he saw past all the wrong. Magnify his name because after all that we said and did, he still had the nerve to call us. He still gave us the opportunity to call Abba Father. He still wants to be in relationship with us. Come on, five more seconds. Open your mouth up. Just thank him. He could have reached past you and chose somebody else. He could have looked over you and chose somebody else. But God is so in love with you that he looked at you in the middle of your situation and said, I have still called you to be my son. I have still called you to be my daughter. Now, the only thing you got to do is, and this might be the hardest job, is to forgive yourself for all the things that you did. Because I got good news for you. God ain't mad at you. You may have your seats. God don't have a problem with you. He still loves you as much as he did when he created you. There may be somebody today who is here. You, you don't know the Lord. You never confessed him as your savior. You've never given the preacher your hand and given God your heart. If you're not saved and you want to get saved, no matter where you are, whether you're watching on our Facebook, YouTube, our church website, no matter where you are, if you're not saved, then you want to get saved. If you want to commit to the Lord on today, I'm going to ask you to make the boldest step of your life. The next 10 seconds, count on with me, the next 10 seconds, you can make the most intelligent decision of your life. And that is to give the Lord your life. So I'm going to ask you, I'm going to compel you, I'm going to ask you, admonish you to come this way. If you're not saved, then you want to be saved. If you want the Lord to loose you because he has work for you to do, well, the first process of him loosening you is you walking this way, giving him your life. We're going to clap our hands, you're going to walk this way, come on. If you're not saved, then you want to get saved. If you want to give the Lord your life, come on, walk this way. If you want to recommit yourself to God, come on, walk this way. Secondly, if you can say that life got hard and you backslid, you turned away from God for whatever reason, maybe your heart was broken or you got disenchanted with the church, maybe life happened to you and it made you feel like you were all by yourself. I got good news to you. God said that he is married to the backslider. David said, if I make my bed in hell, you'll be there. No matter where you are, no matter where you go, his arm is long enough to reach you in the middle of your situation. If you want to recommit yourself back to the Lord, we're going to clap our hands. You're going to walk this way. Come on. If you want to recommit yourself back to the Lord, if you want to be used by him in this part of your life, come on and walk this way. And then last but not least, if you're already saved but you need a church home, you need a place where you could grow and sow, we're going to ask that you would take us under consideration 
Right, Star St. James. If you want to partner with a church who believes in the preaching of the word as you just saw, who believes in sowing seed and living our very best lives for the Lord, we're going to ask you to walk this way. We're going to clap our hands. Somebody may be walking. If you want to be placed under watch care until you figure things out, or to God push you in the place where he wants you to be, or till he answers our prayer and leave you right here, we want to clap our hands one more time. Somebody may be walking. Help me evangelize your role. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, are you saved? Do you have a church home? Come on, if they couldn't ask you, walk them down this way. Be their usher on today. Walk them this way. Last but not least, if you didn't feel like walking down the steps, you didn't want to take your chances on the stairs, I get it, I understand. Why don't you stand to your feet wherever you are if you want to be saved, if you want to recommit yourself. If you want to give the Lord your life, if you want to join this church we placed on the watch care, you don't even have to come all the way down here. We'll meet you exactly where you are. Come on, stand to your feet. We're going to clap our hands. Somebody may be standing. If you're watching via Facebook, YouTube, our church website, if you want to get saved, give your life to the Lord, go ahead and drop your name in the comment section. We'll be sure to make sure that we get in contact with you and minister to you appropriately. Well, there are none today, but we're still glad there's still room at the cross. Clap your hands for the Lord. I got good news for you. It's giving time in the house of the Lord. Let's get ready to give. I want to make this announcement first. If you need an envelope, raise your hand. We'll get one to you. Those that are swiping, we have people all around the building. Where are swipers at? Wave your hand. There they are in the back in the front. You can move there now. Those online, the information is on the screen. But I want to say this. Next Sunday is not only Easter, but we are celebrating our pastor 50th birthday. I'll say it again. We are celebrating our pastor's 50th birthday. He didn't want to do anything. He didn't want anything, but uh, we're disobedient. Amen. So come prepared next week. Let's give. I believe there are giving levels of 500, 300, 150, and I'm asking nobody give less than $50 on next week. Amen. Let's come and bless our man of God. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to pray over your seed, and then we're going to give. Father, thank you for this day and this opportunity that you've given to us. We know that the seed that leaves our hand never leaves our life. God, we pray now that you will bless your people, not only a hundredfold, but a thousand times more. In Jesus' name we pray, and the people of God said amen. amen. All right, everybody's giving. Come on, let's give now. band and singers that sounds so good amen we got just a couple of announcements before we get ready to leave on today uh, don't forget that uh, I know this Sunday we had Sunday school start at 8 o'clock but every Sunday at 8 15 Sundays at 8 15 we have in person as well as virtual Sunday school that's from 8 15 to 9 15 in person and virtual don't forget every Sunday we have children's church look to your left and to your right and say if you got some children yeah, if you got some cheering, I know I said cheering. 
please send them to Children's Church. Why do you want to send them to Children's Church? My wife today just leaned over during service and told me this. I have a seven-year-old that's in Children's Church. Over the week, she was with her granny, and her granny said, Oh, Friday's going to be Good Friday. My seven-year-old daughter, because she's in Children's Church, looked at her grandmother and said, No, Grandma, it's not Good Friday. It wasn't Good Friday for Jesus. She said they crucified and despised Jesus, so it wasn't a Good Friday for him. I didn't teach my daughter that. So that's what Children's Church will do for your child if you send your child to Children's Church. So I unapologetically put a plug in for Children's Church. Don't forget every Monday this week for our prayer. This week for our prayer, we're going to have prayer Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Boy, y'all know about this prayer call stuff, don't it? Because it works. Prayer works. So don't forget, we're going to have prayer every day this week. The information should be on our screen there. And then also don't forget, we're going to have our CDI training. That's going to be once again this March, March 27th. It's going to be at 7 p.m. Our facilitators, are you enjoying this training that we're having? Man, we are enjoying the training, this training. Now, um, I have two more announcements, two big announcements, two big announcements. I'm going to announce this first one first, and then the last big one, I'm going to give it last, okay? If you went to our Think Pink event, just stand. Any of the ladies, did y'all enjoy yourself? Did y'all enjoy yourself? Oh my gosh, we not only were empowered with information, but there was such a camaraderie that the women had with themselves. And man, they were dancing and there were giveaways. Well, guess what? You have another chance on this Tuesday. You have one more chance this Tuesday. We had women, we had uh, teenagers there. All I think the oldest was about 80 something years old. So if you, this Tuesday at six o'clock, this Tuesday at 6 o'clock, we're doing Think Pink all over again. We're flying in. We're bringing in this phenomenal, phenomenal speaker, Tommy Vincent. Man, she flies all across the country, all across the globe, doing some phenomenal work. She and her husband doing work with the NFL. Specifically, she does a lot of work with the women empowerment. She's a survivor of domestic violence, a survivor of depression, and she's been on ABC, NBC, you name it, CBS. She's been all across the country. So we are bringing you great resources, okay? Okay, so if you want to register, we will be registering you right outside the door. So that was the first one. But here is the real, real, real big announcement. Where is our, our Elder Larry? Is our Elder Larry anywhere nearby? He's in the back. Elder Larry, if you can. This Friday is our Good Friday service. This Friday is our Good Friday service. This is a service you don't want to miss. When I say Elder Larry and Sister uh, Serena and our uh, ministers of worship, our ministers of worship, Sister Cicely, you know, when I say they have this program on lock, this program is on lock. I got a chance to get a sneak peek into what they were doing and what's going on. I'm telling you, it's going to be phenomenal. If you are not here, you are going to miss the blessings of God that's going to go forth on this Friday. So this Friday is what? And we are going to be in the place, right? It's going to be here. Good Friday service is going to be here at 7 p.m. It's going to be at Kenwood. So go ahead, grab your friends, grab your partners. Go ahead and grab all of them. Yes, all of them. And we want to see you in this place. Because guess what? Our pastor may be flying over to the Holy Land now. But guess what? He's going to be flying back just to see you. Just to see you on Good Friday. So with that, there are no other announcements. Any special announcements? We got one more. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Listen, Pastor Harris just texted me and said he's going to be preaching Friday night. We're going to bring somebody else in, but he's actually going to be preaching Good Friday service. So we want to make sure that we... Absolutely. That's good. So he's going to be preaching Friday night. So we want everybody that can be here. Now, if he's going to cut his trip short and fly all the way back from the Holy Land, you know how many hours that take. Amen. He's going to be in the air more times he's going to be on the ground. So we want to make sure that everybody that can be here, please be here Friday night for our Easter production. Uh, don't forget our Zoom call is going to be Monday through Friday this week. Uh, Monday through Saturday. Yeah, absolutely right. 
I just want to make sure y'all knew. Now, everybody that said that better be on that call. I was taking names. Right, Saturday, make sure that you show up. Um, don't forget our fast starts, amen, 6 a.m. to 3 p.m., all right? And then Easter Sunday, we know our pastor's birthday is the April the 1st. Um, he's turning 50, the big 5-0. Easter Sunday, we're going to celebrate his jubilee birthday. So we want everybody to come here with a mind to bless our pastor in the most phenomenal way. Um, we have car chargers. Ain't that, what kind of church give you a car charger? From the Newtons. EP. That's my man. So now we got car chargers. You no longer have to tell that person that you're dating my phone, dad, because we got you. Y'all know how you do it. Don't act funny. They're going to be out front. <laughs> Stand up. We're ready to go. Oh, yeah. We have palms that we're going to give out. They're going to give them out at the very, uh, as you exit the uh, sanctuary. Uh, make sure that you grab one, take it with you. Father, we pray that you would bless these palms as they get them. And God, we pray, oh God, that they would make remembrance that as they grab that palm, that you still have need of them. Thank you, God, for loosening us from every place, every situation that has us bound. We glorify your name today because we know that your name is good and it is great. We pray that God, as we enter this week, this week of passion, this holy week, that you would keep our mind on the cross. Help us to remember the awesome, the outstanding work that you did to win us back out of the grips of Satan. Father, we pray today that this week will be the very best week of our lives. We pray that you would allow resources to rush our bank accounts. Money that we didn't even know was coming, let it come our way. We pray for health and wealth and peace to be our portion. We pray for a good night of sleep every night this week, starting with tonight. No more night termers, no more things that provoke our mind to keep us up all night, tossing and turning. We pray that you would just let us rest under a blanket of peace all week long. And then keep all of our loved ones in the mighty name of Jesus. God, as we leave this place, but never from your presence, we pray that you would keep and cover us. Bring us back here at your appointed time, ready to praise your holy name. It's in the powerful name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Listen, one final announcement. We need candy. Now, you know Easter ain't nothing without candy. We need candy. So if you got candy, you could donate. Bring it over to the Turn Center by Thursday. As much candy as you can. Bring it over. We want to make sure we give our kids ample portions. All right? God bless. Have a good week. Love you. Preachers, don't forget our meeting. Preachers, don't forget our uh, training session that starts here shortly. Thank you.